What's up guys, welcome back to another review, and this time I'm going to be covering Star Trek Beyond, the third entry into the Star Trek reboot series. Now, unlike the previous two installments, this one is directed by Justin Lin and co-written by Simon Pegg and Doug Jean. Returning cast from the previous two movies make their triumphant return, and we have new additions from Sofia Butuela and Idris Elba <coughs> as the villain. Now... I'm going to try and make this review as short as I can because Star Trek Beyond, after watching it again for a third time, this movie is neck and neck with Into Darkness as in terms of my favorite as my favorite Star Trek movie of the new generation. Star Trek Beyond is a fun, fun movie. This movie has got like a more has a more lighthearted energy to it as opposed to the previous to previous two movies which had a little which were a little bit more darker in tone. This one felt more lighter. This one had more energy to me. Um, Simon Pegg, as a co-writer, you know, he threw a lot of, you know, he made, he just, he just made the dialogues really, really fun on his part, especially the comedic bits. Um, I love how they were, how they, <laughs> how they handled a lot of the relationships in this movie. Um, pretty much, the team gets attacked by this guy called uh, Crawl, and they all get abandoned on this planet. And of course, every member of of the Enterprise are like divided in their own into their own little groups. You have Ohora and Sulu, who are being held captive by by Krull. You have Bones and Spock, who are abandoned, and with and of course, by Spock is hurt really, really bad. Um, you have Pike, not Pike. You have Kirk and Chekhov. They're stranded and they're doing their own little thing. And you have Scotty, who is hanging out with this new character called Jayla. And I like how. These separate stories developed the characters, particularly with Bones and Spock. Like Bones and Spock, they had interactions in the previous two movies, but they never really had any like they never shared any like really long screen time. This movie, you get that. You get the the relationship between Bones and Spock really grows in this movie, and you see that they have a neutral respect for one another, and there's a, and there's a, and their hints of a friendship between those two start to blossom. And I thought it was really, really well done. They have <clears throat> Quinto and Urban had really good chemistry in their scenes together. Um, they were funny, and they were both, and they were heartfelt at the same time. Well, not well, not breaking character, you know. Bones was still that, you know, had that humor, that classic Bones humor, and you know, Spock was still Spock. But I like how you see Spock crack a laugh, and Bones is just like, "Oh my God, you're getting delirious." That was funny stuff. The stuff between uh, Scotty and the character Jayla was good too. We find out that Jayla was abandoned on this planet because Crawl had killed her people, and Scotty pretty much becomes like a mentor to Jayla in a way. You know, they have like this student-teacher team vibe going between those two. Thought that was well done. Um, Kirk and Chekhov, they have their own little thing going on. Though. They have their own little thing going on, which was fun. And you know, Sulu and Aurora, and Aurora of course. Are or joint, or you know, trying to figure out a way to escape the clutches of the character called Crawl. Now, eventually, the team of the Enterprise, you know, they get back together and they defeat Crawl. But the stuff leading up to that, to me, was really, really well done. I liked it a lot, and I like the whole story of this movie too. And I like the character of Crawl too. Idris Elba did a fantastic job playing the character of Crawl. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I like Crawl's whole story about how he, about how Crawl himself felt betrayed. By the uh, Federation, um, he was pretty. He was pretty much a, uh, a war hero who went astray. I thought his character was well handled, and I thought it was good stuff. Uh, the look of Crawl looks is fantastic. It's good look, good unique alien look. I like it a lot. Uh, the production value of the movie is fantastic. The look of the planet is really well done. It's practical. The CGI effects, again, were fantastic. Justin Lin, as a director, to me, is much better at shooting action scenes than, than again, this guy's coming off the Fast and the Furious movie, so he has experience in directing those fast-paced action scenes. And that's what Justin Lin does. He does fast-paced action scenes in this movie, and they look fantastic. With the best one being the space battle to Beastie Boys Sabotage. Probably the best action scene in this whole movie. And, of course, you get the combat between Kirk and uh, Krull, who is trying to release this uh, this chemical that will kill everyone you know 
they show this chemical kill of uh, one of a member of the Enterprise. They pretty much just disintegrated this person. So yeah, he wants to use this uh, this uh, I can't remember uh, Yorktown. This, this place is called like a space station called Yorktown. He wants to use it. He wants to use like the air vents to like spread this disease, pretty much, all and just incinerate the Federation planet by planet because of how much he had. He just despises it. So yeah, I thought again, all that was done fairly, fairly well, and yeah, those are like my overall thoughts in the movie. It's fantastic. The acting's great. The production value is great. You know, this like I said, this is a very fun, energetic movies, and it shows in its fight scenes. It shows in his dialogue and the character interactions. So everything about this movie is fantastic. Uh, of course, this movie is also, unfortunately, the final movie to f feature Anton Yelchin as Chekhov. Of course, uh, Anton Yelchin passed away, unfortunately, about a week or two before the film's release. And, of course, this movie <clears throat> paid a nice little tribute to... Leonard Nimoy, Spock. Of course, Spock had Nimoy had passed away. I think a year before the movie was released. So the movie paid a little tribute to that. And also at the end of the movie, it paid a nice little tribute to the original cast of of Star Trek. When young Spock goes through Nimoy goes through old Spock's personal things, and he sees the picture of the old Enterprise crew. And of course, that was done to coincide with the now 50th anniversary of Star Trek at that time. So yeah, I thought all that was really good stuff. So, yeah, you know, those are my overall quick, fast thoughts in this movie. Of course, I didn't even cover... I didn't even, even cover the tip of the iceberg of this thing, because I think you should give this one a watch. It's a really good movie. It's damn fun. And I give it a 10 out of 10. It's really right up there with Into Darkness. But I think Into Darkness is right above it, because I think Khan is a better villain than Crawl. Especially Cumberbatch's version of Khan. <clears throat> but uh, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, Star Trek Beyond, 10 out of 10. Fun, energetic movie. The cast is fantastic. The action scenes are well done. And yeah, I have very little complaints about this movie. To me, it's near, it's perfect. So yeah, Ooh, sorry about that. if you have seen Star Trek Beyond, give it a watch. I think you'll be entertained. Anyway, my name is AJ Legend. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll check you back next time for more.